number of vortices and the limit of the Euler algebra. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, today I'll be talking about the vortex wave system as the limit of the Euler alpha models. This is a joint work with um, Elaine and Milton Lopes, both now at UFRJ. So I'll start describing, I'll, I'll talk quickly about the Euler equations and the vorticity equations. I'll talk a bit more about the vortex wave system and the 2D Euler alpha model. I'll give some useful properties and some conserved quantities. I'll state the main theorem and give a sketch of the proof. So let's first consider the, the, Euler, the incompressible Euler equations in the whole plane. Here, V is the divergence-free vector field, and P is the, the pressure. Um, in our analysis, it will be extremely useful to consider the vorticity of the fluid, which is defined as the curl of the velocity. Yeah. Yes. Um, so in terms, in, in an R2, the Euler's equations can be written as a transport equation for the vorticity. Um, the the divergence-free vector velocity field can be recovered from the vorticity using the Biot-Savart law. Here K is the kernel of the Biot-Savart law, is defined as the grad perp of the fundamental solution of the Laplace equation in R2. Um, this is the, the definition of weak solution for the vorticity equation. And we have a classic result from Judovich from 63, where he proved that if my initial vorticity belongs to L infinity L1, then there exists for all times a unique weak solution of um, the vorticity equation. In this work, we're interested in a special measure valued solutions. Um, let M be then the space of real um, ma random measures. So we're, we're interested in considering the problem where the initial condition Q0 belonging to M has an atomic part, which is the superposition of a, a finite number of uh, point vortices with intensity Mi, and a bounded part with, which is compactly supported omega zero that belongs to LP with P bigger than two. Um, in order to study such the behavior such as two-dimensional flows in which you have a continuously distributed vorticity and a superposition of point vortices, uh, Marchiori and Pulvirenti in 91 introduced the vortex wave system. So this model separates the evolution of the bounded part omega that evolves through uh, using a, the Euler equation from the evolution of the point vortices that evolve using the, po uh, the point vortex system. And you have a coupling of these two equations by means of the Biot-Savart law. Um, if, you, if omega is uh, identically zero, you retrieve the, the point vortex system. A solution of the systems consists then of uh, omega, the, bound, the, the bounded part omega, along with the vortex paths given by Zi. Um, this term in blue uh, represents the velocity associated with the, uh, a point vortex with intensity mj following a path Zj. So we can see here that each point vortices um, evolves, moves along, uh, influenced by the velocity associated with the continuous part um, of the vorticity, as well as the velocity associated with the other's point vortices. In turn, we have that the bounded part, sorry, a bounded part omega evolves, uh, is also influenced by the point vortex velocity. Uh, it's important to notice that even if my omega zero is smooth, the, the velocity field associated with the transport equation for omega has singularities in each point vortex. So we'll be talking about uh, weak solutions for the vortex wave system. The first of one we'll be talking is the Lagrangian solution of the vortex wave system, where you ha we have a well-defined 
uh, f sorry, well-defined flow here, phi, where it, it evolves uh, using the, through the velocity associated with the continuous part of the vorticity as well as the velocity associated with the point vortex. And we also have that this, um, that the vorticity is, uh, is constant along the trajectories of this flow. So, which results we have? So, basically, Marchiori and Puvirenti in 91 proved the existence of a Lagrangian solution for the vortex wave system uh, with initial condition omega zero in um, L infinity L1. And when the intensities, MIs of the vortices, have the same sign, and also you consider that the, the point vortex do not belong to the support of the vorticity, the, the bounded part of the vorticity, you actually have that the vortices do not collide in finite time and the solutions are actually global. Um, uniqueness, it, you don't, there's no general result on uniqueness. You can really only obtain uniqueness results when you make additional assumptions on the behavior of omega, omega zero near the point vortices. So you have the result from Poverenti in 91, Strato Wojstow in 94, and this very interesting result from Lacave and Mule from 2009. Um, the solutions, the, 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 the Lagrangian solutions of the vortex wave systems are very restrictive, basically because you re it requires the existence of a flow. So, I'm sorry, so we can define a weaker notion of, um, of solution, uh, basically solutions in the um, in the distribution sense. So yeah, this is the definition of uh, the Eulerian solution, where here you have, you, there's no need, you're, at least you're not making any requirements of the existence of a flow. So here you have, then you're, you, you can actually uh, deal with a much larger class of solutions. So in 2011, um, Lopish, Mio, and Nutzenzweil Lopish uh, were able to extend the result from Marchiori Puvirenti. Basically, they proved that if omega zero now belongs to LP with P bigger than two, with compact support, then there exists an Eulerian illusion of the vortex wave system with this initial data. In this work, they uh, do a regularization of the initial conditions and then they apply, they, they consider the the solution given by Bacchiori and Puvirenti. Here what we're doing is we're considering a different type of regularization. What we're going to, more precisely what we're going to do is basically um, consider the, the two-dimensional Euler alpha, the solutions of the two-dimensional Euler alpha model and show that um, the solutions of the vortex wave systems can be seen as a limit uh, of these solutions. So the two-dimensional Euler alpha model. Um, it, first of all, it's interesting to observe that uh, for the three-dimensional Euler alpha model, uh, it's, uh, it's an open problem if there exist weak solutions. But um, for the two-dimensional Euler uh, model, this is well, well established. So the two-dimensional Euler alpha model is a regularization of the incompressible Euler equation, where you, here you have the vorticity governed by this system. Um, you can, in this regularization, the, the singular kernel of the Biot-Savart law is replaced by a smooth kernel K alpha. And, and K alpha and uh, U is seen as the filter fluid velocity. Uh, here, this parameter alpha is a regularization length scale that reflects the width of the, of the filter. So you have that the dynamics of the Euler equations is reproduced on a length scale larger than alpha, and the, and the behavior is average below this threshold. So formally, we recover the Euler equation when alpha tends to zero. So as I mentioned, uh, Oliver, the, the problem of the two dimensions, so Oliver and Scholar in 2001 proved that the two-dimensional Euler alpha model is well posed with initial condition in, um, is a Hadon measure. So 
and, and they also show that there exists a unique Lagrangian flow map describing the evolution of the particles, and this uh, flow map also preserves the Lebesgue measure. This is the result we're going to use. So, um, sorry, it, it follows from the existence of this Lagrangian flow that the vorticity is conserved along the trajectories. So in particular, we can show that if we're considering the, um, the initial condition as the position of point vortex and uh, a background vorticity omega zero, we can show that the, um, the vorticity will remain in this form for all time. Um, using the fact that the vorticity is conserved along the trajectories and also using the, the di di divergence-free condition, we can show that these intensities MIs are preserved uh, as well as the LP norm of the continuous part of the vorticity. And we also have, using the uniqueness of solutions and the time reversibility of the equation, that the vortices do not, do not collide in finite time. So, this, the, in this regularization, I was saying that the kernel of the Biosav alloy is replaced by a smoother kernel K alpha that is obtained by doing this convolution of this Biosav kernel K with the green function J alpha associated with this operator which reflects the regularization we're doing. So, we have that this kernel G alpha is in L1 and it decays exponentially. Um, it follows from the fact that uh, J alpha is radi radially symmetric, that we can show that K alpha has the same symmetric properties as K. Um, it follows also from the fact that G alpha decays exponentially as uh, norm of X tends to infinity, that it, K alpha actually behaves as K when the norm of X tends to zero, and we also show that the family of kernels K-alpha converge uniformly to K on compact sets. Um, a very important result that we're going to use is the, that we use the symmetric properties of K-alpha and the fact that the flow preserves the leg mag measure, we can show that this generalized Hamiltonian is conserved in time. Um, this result, this is then where we're able to state our main result, um, where we show that uh, the, the a sequence of solutions of the Euler alpha model with initial conditions Q0 in this form converge to a global Eulerian solution of the vortex wave system as my regularization uh, uh, parameter alpha tends to zero. And as in the same way, if we don't have the single sign condition on the in intensities MI, we only obtain converges on a closed interval of time. So, the sketch of the proof, so basically we have, uh, we're using as a base arguments from uh, the paper from Lopish, Nusen Vai Lopish and Mio. So we're going to consider the initial vorticity as the superposition of point vortices and the background vorticity omega zero, where omega zero belongs to LP with P bigger than two and has compact support. Then we're going to also, we're going to consider the global solution obtained using the oliver scholar theorem. We're going to establish some uniform estimates in respect to alpha and to obtain compactness and a weak limit. And finally, we're going to show that this weak limit is a weak solution of the vortex wave system. Uh, a very important uh, uniform estimate uh, we're just recalling it's a standard result. You say that basically if om i omega zero belongs to L1 and LP with P bigger than two, and this is very important, we obtain that uh, omega alpha is uniformly bounded and therefore we have that the velocity associated with omega alpha, given as the convolution with my kernel K alpha, is also uniformly bounded. So it's, it follows from the fact that omega alpha is transported by the flow and just using Young's inequality. Um, this is another very important uh, uniform estimate. We're, if we consider the momentum of inertia associated with the point vortices, we are able to, sorry, we are able to, <coughs> 
to control the growth on the support of the point vortices and of the flow and show that it grows at most linearly. This is. And, and finally, <coughs> one of very important uniform estimates, um, we use the conservation of the generalized Hamiltonian and this previous result to show that basically the <coughs> sorry that to to obtain um, this lower bound for the minimal distance between the point vortices, which is uniformly with respect to alpha. So it's oh, I'll just skip this. And so finally, using all these above estimates and standard compactness arguments, we are able to to show. So we're able to show that base, we obtain omega and uh, zi's such that we have that omega alpha t converges weakly to omega t in Lp with p bigger than 2. We have, um, if you define v as the convolution of k with omega, we obtain that v alpha converges uniformly to v on compact sets. And finally, using a, our zell asquely argument, we can show that uh, the, the path zi alpha converges uniformly to zi is also a compact set. Um, so it just, the, the, uh, we just need to remain to show that this weak limit that we obtain is actually a solution of the vortex wave system. First of all, we just used the, the, the previous lemma and the fact that we obtain a uniformly lower bound for the distance between the point vortices, we're able to show that this term converges uniformly to this term here, which is the velocity, which is what we want for it to be the velocity associated with the point vortices as alpha tends to zero. So we have that our path ZI satisfies the desired OD of the vortex wave system. So we just need to show now that the vorticity so <clears throat> the continuous part of the vorticity satisfies this equation in the distribution sense. To do this, sorry, yeah. to do this, we define um, a cutoff function, <coughs> and um, and we introduce a new parameter epsilon, such that you have that chi epsilon satisfies these properties. Then we give a test function and define um, phi epsilon to be the product of this uh, test function and the product of these um, cutoff functions, such that uh, phi epsilon is the product of phi with chi epsilon, where basically we're having it vanishing on each of the point vortices. Um, so basically we want um, the, our bounded part to satisfy the the equation on the distribution sense. We, have, we use the fact that uh, our K alpha satisfies is a global solution of the Euler alpha equation. Therefore, we have that this equation is satisfied by omega, omega alpha. Then we fix epsilon and tan alpha to zero, and then we deduce that V alpha dot grad phi epsilon converges uniformly to V dot gri phi epsilon which is this term here. And now we need to, and since we, our test function phi epsilon vanishes on the union of these balls centered at the point vortices and chi alpha converges uniformly to xi, we obtain that this term uh, k alpha dot grad phi also converges uniformly to, to, to k dot grad phi epsilon. And finally, we obtain the result using the fact that omega alpha converges weakly to omega. So the last step is let epsilon goes to, uh, to zero. So we basically cal calculate this expression, putting uh, phi epsilon as the product of chi epsilon with phi. This term here we show, this term here we just use the, the standard um, we use the definition and the properties of uh, symmetry of K, and we show that basically this term here vanishes. So now if my, my X belong to the support of the grad of Xi I epsilon, we can use our, the uniform bound to, 
to find a, a lower bound for this, um, <coughs> for this term here using our proposition and using the, L, uh, the uniform L infinity bound for the vertice TV. And the ODE satisfied the point vertices, we can find this inequality and then we use Holder to find um, a lower bound for, um, for this expression. And finally, we have that this right hand side goes to zero using the definition because of our, the definition of our cutoff function. So finally, we obtained uh, the, our result using the pointwise convergence of a chi epsilon and a dominate convergence theorem. We obtained our, our theorem. Thank you very much.